It is the end of July and summer is in full bloom here in Oxford. I thought it would be fun to continue this world building and fantasy map series. So today I'll talk about lakes while I show you a couple of different ways to draw lakes for fantasy maps. Lakes can range from ponds to smaller lakes or larger bodies of water that are so big that they have more in common with coastal areas. Most lakes contain fresh water but some have higher saline concentrations such as the Dead Sea, Great Salt Lake and Getay Ale Pond in Ethiopia, which has the highest saline water concentration in our world. I would also like to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. At the moment, 321 wonderful people have joined this channel, which honestly makes me very happy. Thank you so much for your support. Famous towns near lakes in fantasy fictions are, of course, Lake Town from The Hobbit by Tolkien. Lake Town is also known as Esaroth and it is built on wooden pillars near the shores of Long Lake, not far from the Lonely Mountain. While most lakes in our world are the results of glaciers or the creation of so-called oxbows in rivers, a lake can also be the results of man-made activities. This small lake here in Oxford was actually a quarry pit from the beginning. It has, with time, filled up with water and the pond-like lake attracts a wide range of animals, insects and birds. If you are writing an RPG adventure for Dungeons and Dragons or for other 5e systems, you can include a wide variety of freshwater monsters. For example, animals and beasts such as crocodiles, giant toads and snakes. Monsters could also include humanoid creatures, for example Mero, Sahuajin and the frog-like Bollywugs. In addition, if the lake is large enough, you can also add coastal encounters, such as a wreck with undead guests, or a marauding hydra that terrorizes the coast of the lake.
When it comes to geology, it might be useful to know that becks, streams and rivers form in areas where the groundwater reaches the surface. Water in a lake can also come from underground streams, rain or the melting of ice and snow. Water always flow from the highest point towards a lower point and it naturally pools in areas where the groundwater is high and the terrain has been shaped like a bowl. When it comes to drawing fantasy maps, it's good to remember that while a lake might have several inlets, it usually only has one outlet or no outlet at all. In addition, if the area around a lake is rather flat, it might turn into a swamp or a wetland. In our adventure Rise of the Ice Dragon trilogy, I created a monster called the Winter Eel or Storsjöjuret among the nomadic tribes. It is a weird creature, a type of aberration with a sharp horn similar to a unicorn or a narwhal's horn. It uses a razor sharp horn to cut through the ice during the winter and to trap innocent creatures that the monster then try to drag in under the cold surface. In addition, any type of larger body of water can easily become an environmental hazard to make things more dangerous. If your adventurers are on a boat, there is always a risk that they might fall overboard during an encounter. This could increase the stakes and the danger of an encounter, since the characters might have to decide between trying to help their drowning friends or defeat the horrifying monster. These are the final illustrations that I made. I took the opportunity to experiment a little bit and used two different types of watercolour blue, ultramarine and cerulean blue with plenty of water and I'm quite happy with the result. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you will have a wonderful and creative day.